something huh yes here it is it's john park's workshop and welcome i uh went a little bonkers there with the uh little bits synth we were talking about little bits yesterday so i decided to to break out the uh some of the little little bits synth parts there and uh and mess around and do kind of something spooky because it's halloween already can you believe it today is october 31st i know it's not uh but what is this? This is the 29th of August. That's, that's kind of close enough, right? Um, and so here we are. We've begun Halloweening already. And uh, part of that is because we're working on some of these monster mask projects, which uh, I have a cool one, I think, you'll enjoy today. Uh, but before we get into that, how about we take care of some business, such as, have I mentioned, our jobs board. Jobs.adafruit.com is the place to be if you're interested in getting a job or hiring someone for a job. And uh, there's a new opportunity here, which is a um, volunteer position. It's the editorial assistant at Micromag, which is a microbit magazine. I hadn't heard of it, but it's an unofficial microbit community magazine written by the community and managed by a small but mighty team of dedicated community volunteers. Sounds interesting. If that's something you're uh, you're looking to do, go check it out. And you can do that over on jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, and the uh, the next little bit of business I wanted to uh, take care of is a coupon code for you. And that is today's coupon code. It's dollface, and that's going to get you 10% off in the store. So head on over to Adafruit, look for some cool stuff, drop it into your cart. And then on the way out, don't forget to type this in, Dollface. Uh, Dollface is the name of this creepy mask that you see in the background here that I'm going to be uh, doing something with here today. You may have seen a sneak peek of that last night on the show and tell, Adafruit show and tell every Wednesday night. Uh, so, yeah, don't forget that. That'll, that'll get you 10% off all the stuff you want to get other than gift certificates, software, and subscriptions. Um, hey, speaking of subscriptions... I, uh, I almost forgot. You can head on over to Adafruit Daily. Let's see if I can find it. There you go, adafruitdaily.com. And this is where you can subscribe to the various newsletters that we put out. Some are uh, weekly, some are monthly. Uh, we have a monthly coming out soon. It's uh, going to be the Make Code newsletter. And uh, Mike Barella and PT and I have been busily populating that with interesting uh, news and references and links and all things Make Code. So go there and, and uh, click on that little box right there. Type in your email address. Hit sign up for Adafruit uh, Daily, and we won't uh, spam you or anything. You can cancel at any time. We don't share lists with anybody, which is awesome. Um, but that's a way to stay on top of all of the latest uh, happenings in the make code world. So please go check that out. Uh, now here I've got a, uh, a product of the week for you. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. So this is the micro bit, no, not micro bit, meow bit. 
It's like a micro bit. Uh, it's the Meow Bit, and it is a little game, uh, programmable game console that has the micro bit edge connector form factor at the bottom. Uh, it's a STM32F401 uh, chipset, I believe, in it. Uh, so you can program it from Make Code Arcade. And I'm going to show you a, uh, here's an overhead view of one. I, I got lucky and got an orange one. You can't specify the color. You're either going to get teal. Well, I say I got lucky, but I love that teal also. So you can't lose. Um, comes in this really nice silicone rubber case. You can see that these uh, protectors peel off the bottom here, and you can access the edge connector uh, either slot it into one of the micro bit accessory connectors or you can use alligator clips with that. Uh, and it's a lovely little game machine. It's got a pouch in the back to stick a LiPo battery and you can plug in a battery here. I think it's got a charging circuit on it. Um, and I actually will show it to you when we do uh, my game pick of the week. I decided to put it on the Meow Bit. But that's, uh, that's my pick of the week. It's a pretty cool, oh gosh, there's so many of me. Where did I, how do I? There I am. Uh, Kitten Bot, Meow Bit. They just shoved together a bunch of cute names there, didn't they? Uh, so go check it out, huh? We got those in the store. All right. Uh, you know what? This brings us to a thing I like to call the Make Code Minute. And you know what? For the Make Code Minute today, I wanted to talk about how you can use the accelerometer on the uh, Circuit Playground Express to drive pins high or low, which will in turn flip on a 120 volt switch. So check this out. I've got my Circuit Playground Express here. Uh, you can see in my code what I've got going on is a really simple sketch. I'm using over in this advanced section these pins and so you can do a lot of stuff with digital and analog uh, input output or IO pins. So what I've done is I've said on start I'm going to send the uh, pin called A1, it's one of the pads on the Circuit Playground Express, to low and then I set all the pixels to yellow just so I know I've turned it on and things are working. Then when I uh, have the face up, which is sort of the resting on a table orientation. I'm going to keep that pin A1 low and I'm going to set all the pixels to red. Then when I tilt it up, the accelerometer is going to know that I've done that and it's going to write digital A1 pin to high and then it's going to set all the pixels to green. Now that in and of itself isn't too interesting, but watch what happens when I do that. Do you notice something over here on my face? I'm getting lit up. So I've got a uh, straight up light bulb, a light bulb socket there that's being lit. Uh, and the way I'm doing that is with a uh, power strip relay. And that's this gizmo you see right here. I can go full screen with this actually. Uh, so if you see this gizmo here, this is uh, got a momentary, or uh, a rather normally off um, pair of switches and a normally on pair of switches. And there's a little control block there that takes a uh, command anywhere from probably two to five or maybe a little more. Uh, volts will tell that to switch its state. So there I can flip that relay and safely turn on and off this uh, light that you can see lighting me up here every time I do that. Uh, and so that is how you can uh, trigger an external relay using Make Code on a Circuit Playground Express. And that is your Make Code Minute. Pretty cool, huh? I thought so. I really like uh, these these little power strips. I don't. I think we have them in stock right now. There's been a couple different uh, variations of these things that have come uh, through the store over the years. But uh, keep an eye out for them if you don't have one. And there are some other solutions too. You can use things like the. Uh, there's a high power relay on uh, a feather wing that you can get to do similar kinds of stuff. But this one is is beautiful because it's. Uh, I believe it's UL listed. Uh, it's safe, it's easy, you're not touching AC, high voltage, high current uh, electricity, it's all sealed away neatly. So I dig that thing, I think it's really cool and that is a, that's a fun way to use it with your, uh, yes it's very illuminating, Andy Calloway. Uh, have I mentioned that if you're interested in checking out the discussion that's going on uh, right now during the show, 
you can head on over to Discord, the Adafruit Discord server. Uh, there's a live broadcast channel. And uh, that is where all the discussion and lots and lots of puns are going on right now. So uh, head on over and check it out if you haven't. All right, uh, that brings us to the uh, Make Code Arcade game of the week. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. Let me bring up a thing. I'll bring that up, how about? Uh, I'll bring a me up, and I'll bring up my Google Chrome here. Let's pop on over. So my pick of the week is this American Sign Language game that was created by Vidget or Vidget. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, and it is what it looks like. It is a, a sort of a flashcard, visual flashcard learning game that helps you test your knowledge of American Sign Language uh, symbols uh, or learn them. And so let's, let's have a look over here. This is uh, the game itself. You can play it inside the simulator here. I think you can. Or it's not playing right now. I'm going to switch over to uh, show it to you running on that little uh, meow bit I showed you before. So I loaded it onto here. Couldn't be easier. And here it loads up. It says brain pad. I'm going to hit A. Oh, it's going to error on me. Let's try that again. Sure, it's not. Uh, maybe it wants to allow that to play. I'll let that play. Sure. There we go. Uh, I think I hit A too early. So you can see here, it's got these terrific illustrations of the uh, sign language letters, and then you go through and you pick which letter you think you're looking at and hit A. Uh, I'm wrong. That's not a P. I don't know sign language, so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take some guesses here. Is that a Z? Is it a G? Is it an H? It's going to keep letting me. There we go. It was an H. Uh, I bet that's a X or a W. No, it's a W. I bet that's a W. There you go. Um, so you can see it's a really cool, beautifully illustrated. I don't know the story of it, so I'm going to go on the forums and ask uh, Vidget or Vidget, or if you're watching, let us know uh, where where this all came from. Where'd the illustrations come from? Where'd the concept come from? Because it's uh, it's really terrific. And if we look at it uh, back here in Chrome, I'll show you. Uh, a couple of things about the game. First of all, you can see there's an array of sprites here that are all these letters that are used. Um, so these sprite arrays are really handy because it allows you to uh, access them with an index. So you can pull up five random numbers and it's going to uh, throw those up on the side of the screen. And then it's going to also use this array of these signs. So you can see we've got all these sprites here uh, and these are part of this large array. And so those are selected, and then uh, the uh, number of the choice that you pick is correlated to the correct answer, and you either lose a, a point, or rather lose a, a life, a heart, or you uh, proceed to the next one and gain points. One thing I did, since I don't know sign language, I don't know American Sign Language alphabet, uh, other than a few guesses uh, at some things, I changed the number of lives you have to 100. The game starts out as uh, six, but one of the nice things about make code arcade and an open um, platform like this is that you can go and look at the source code. And here I found the set life to um, 100. It was at three. And that allows me to sort of tailor the game to learning rather than testing knowledge. Uh, so I thought that was a really beautifully done uh, game, nicely illustrated, uh, straightforward, great execution. And so that's my arcade game pick of the week. It is American Sign Language Game by Vidget or Vidget. So thank you for sharing that. Very cool. Uh, all right, now I can move this out of the way. Let's uh, let's get to the meat of things here. Let me see my cameras. Yeah, they're all working. It's a little hot today, and I don't have the AC running, but the cameras seem to be working. Um, oh, you know what? One quick thing I wanted to do. I wanted to do a little tool tip. Uh, hi, over in YouTube. Hey, Matambale. Hi, Evil Ocelot. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as a little software tool tip, and this was sent in by everybody's friend Todd Kurt, Mr. Todd Bot, over in the uh, forums and on the internet at large. Uh, and this is for a, let me bring up a browser window with this in, in place. Uh, I've got it over here. This is for a, uh, a tool if you're building circuit boards, you sometimes end up with um, 
a file format that's used for the actual machining or, or etching or silk screening, solder masking of circuit boards. It's, it's called a Gerber file. It's a, a format, a series of layers. Um, and there's this Gerber viewer called, uh, what's it called? Cuprum, which I believe is Latin for copper. Uh, and so if we, uh, wrong screen, if we look over here, there we go. Uh, this is the website. So head to Cuprum. It's a free uh, Gerber viewer for Mac. And so it has a standalone application, which is nice. That looks like, let me find it, this right here. Uh, so there, I've been working on a little, uh, I've been working to learn Eagle, and so I was building a little circuit board to do some uh, MIDI, there's a few MIDI standards of, of cables, so I've built a little thing to plug them together. Um, this is the Cuprum viewer, so it allows you to look at the different layers. Um, here I can turn on and off things. Uh, these are each the different separate layers that, that I spit out from Eagle when I was building it. Um, but the reason that Todd thought this was so cool and worth a mention is it actually, when you install it, adds a feature to your finder where you can um, just view these files as if they're an image file or, or a text file that, that normally the operating system Mac OS can view. So that means if you're just cruising along in the finder and you run across a Gerber file, no need to open anything. It's just going to run uh, or it's going to build a preview right here. Uh, inside of the Finder, which is very, very handy if you have loads and loads of uh, Gerber files laying around. Super cool tip. Uh, hopefully there's an equivalent for Windows and Linux uh, if people are interested in that sort of thing, but I wanted to share that and I wanted to thank Todd for sending in that tip just moments before the show. He sent that in and, and I uh, was able to install it and give it the thumbs up. It's very cool. So thanks, Todd. Uh, all right, so let's get to our uh, project of the week. So we've been talking about our monster mask. Let me switch, uh, let me head on over to the bench here. And the monster mask is this little beauty right here. It is an M4 based board that has a couple of TFT displays on it. Uh, I've got a little battery plugged into it and I'm just charging it with the charge circuit there. Uh, and if I turn this on right now, you're gonna see uh, a little sample uh, iris and sclera I made. Actually, it's a fully white sclera, so I just left the bitmap off of there. And then I made this sort of camera aperture iris just because I thought it was cool and a little bit creepy. Um, and so what I wanted to show you is you can use this in a lot of ways. You can put it on some goggles and wear it on your head or a headband. Um, but I wanted to look at how to incorporate this into a sort of typical Halloween mask. Uh, and so if you look here, I've got mounted on my handy um, skull and pipe here, I've got this Halloween mask. And this is a Halloween mask I found at the 365-day uh, year Halloween store that we have uh, in LA called Halloween Town. I got this, and uh, you can hear it's going to smish my nose. Um, this is from a horror movie called The Strangers Pray at Night, and this is Dollface, hence our coupon code. Uh, and it's a, I picked this one specifically because you'll find a few masks like this where there's very, very large eye cutouts. Uh, and in some cases, there's also sort of a black nylon. Uh, let me switch cameras again. So you can actually see through that, as you can see there. Um, but from the outside, when your eyes are pretty close up to it and there's not much light back there, it looks fairly dark. Uh, and so the reason I picked this is I thought if we place a set of eyes towards the top here, um, it's a little cross-eyed there, you can still see through the bottom. So if we get this up high enough with a large uh, set of eyes, if you look at some Halloween masks, this one's actually particularly tiny. Um, this has some tiny little eyes that are a little wide set. So what I'd do is probably modify these and cut them and, and make bigger holes and then place some black uh, nylon material, like stocking material, glue it on the inside there. Um, but for ease of use. I found a mask that's like that already, and you'll find these out there. Uh, and then I said, okay, how can we mount these in here so that we meet a few requirements? One, like I said, I still want to be able to see out from under them. Uh, so if I give you that view again, all right, so I can see out from under there. Uh, in the dark, you don't really see my eyes, which is cool. Um, but I also wanted to be able to access the charging port because I'll have a battery on there. 
Uh, I wanted to be able to access the on off switch as well as the USB port so that we can charge and so that we can uh, reprogram it if we want to update the firmware on there. Just open it up in a text editor, change things around or upload new uh, BMP files. And I wanted to make it easy to put in and out and I wanted to not be sweating all over uh, a bunch of electronics that are crammed right into my forehead. And so um, what I came up with just mostly by luck and chance is that whenever I buy reading glasses uh, in packs of five on Amazon, they come with these little neoprene foam um, holders. And so this is really similar to a uh, thin mouse pad type of material. Uh, it's much, much thinner than something like a wetsuit, I think. Um, and you could use craft foam for this as well. So I've, I've probably got some craft foam around here somewhere. Let's say I've lost it all, haven't I? I don't know where my craft foam went. But uh, thin craft foam would work as well. So it's going to be a cheap material. The nice thing about this is there's no gluing or stitching necessary. It's already a pouch that these glasses fit into nicely. Um, and then we can just use some scissors to cut out a little hole for our uh, ports at the top on off switch if we want. Uh, and then we're going to cut out some holes for the lenses. So um, take a look at this. Let me pull this back out carefully there. Um, the eyes themselves, they actually have a really nice viewing angle. These, these TFT screens, you can, you can get at some pretty pretty good angles from them and still see the screen, which isn't always the case. Some screens will kind of disappear on you from the sides. Uh, but to enhance the effect, we've got a couple different kinds of lenses that you can get uh, in the Adafruit store. So we have, uh, these are these plastic uh, 40 millimeter lenses. And as you can see there, if I get rid of some of these reflections in here, uh, it gives you a more spherical look to it and it looks cool from more angles. Um, Plus, that's going to allow us to bulge out of the uh, eye sockets a little bit on our mask. So you can see that gives us a bit of a, a, a spherical shape there um, and looks creepier than that flat eye, I think. It also gives you some reflections that look like a wet eyeball, which is cool. Uh, so we want to be able to hold those right to the screen. So what I came up with, if we look at this one here, which I've been charging, pull that off is a couple little strips of Velcro so that I can stick it to the mask. And I've cut out a couple circles on there so that we can fit our eyes to the screens. Let me find the on-off switch. Where'd I, where'd I put you? You're off here to the side somewhere. Where is the on-off switch? Is that it? Did I find it? I didn't cut this hole big enough here. <laughs> Let's take care of that right now so you can see how this works. Um, let me just go in there. And we should be able to access the switch. There you are. It was further over than I thought. Okay, give that a second to launch here. Did I turn it on or did I turn it off? check against this one. Or this battery is dead or something else. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so you can see I've got the, the two lenses mounted in uh, place just by cutting a circle that's a little smaller than the rim. Uh, and then they'll sit pretty nicely. They're not really going anywhere and they're pressed up against the mask so they, they hold their position well. So let's pop this in here. And let's see, let me give you the, the big view here. I put them in too low, so now I can't see under it. There we go. Okay, so now I can see out uh, underneath the eye there, which uh, you, you might have to tilt your head down a little bit if you're walking. You always want to be careful if you're, if you're putting on a mask that's obscuring your view. You actually still have peripheral vision, which is nice because the, the mask ends up pushed pretty far forward. And you also probably can notice my nose isn't being squished anymore by the mask. So having, having this uh, as a little sort of headband uh, support helps uh, the mask actually improves the comfort level of, of wearing it. But if you, if you take a look there, um, the, the viewing 
slits here aren't bad. Uh, you might be able to trim this a little more. I left mine intact just because that's where the stitch is. Um, but you could probably get that a little, we could lose about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of material there and have even more uh, viewing area. Or depending on the, the mask you're using, you may have uh, larger eye sockets. So uh, that is about it. I can show you, we've got a couple minutes, I'll show you um, how we do this cutting, uh, how I did it at least. And I did it somewhat unscientifically. You could, you could do this a little more accurately probably. Um, so all I'm doing is if I'm going to be, actually, you know what, let's flip it around. This will give us less material at the bottom. So if it's going in like this, all I'm going to do is place a lens there and I'm going to use a little bit of, oh, you're not seeing that at all, sorry. There we go. Okay, so I'm placing, uh, pretending I'm going to be placing it in this way. Uh, let's see, how about, oh, getting dust on there. How about like that? That might be a good way to do that. Uh, so now all I'm going to do is place a lens where I want one of the lenses. And then I used a silver Sharpie just to mark that hole to cut. And what I want to do is I want to cut it quite a bit smaller than that so we don't get a lot of light leakage. Uh, and then we can really, this is, you can tell, just eyeballing it, so pardon the pun, uh, but it works out pretty well. And so then I went in with some scissors, cut those out, um, do one of them right now for you, a little small. And what I also did with that other one is I didn't want any light leaking out, so I took some black gaffer's tape and just put it around the edges of the TFT screen because the TFT screens have a little backlight. And so you'll always see this little light seeping out from under here. So just with a little bit of gaffer's tape, I'll take a little piece right now, you can go in and just mask the very bottom of the board there. Gaffer's tape is great because it stays in place very nicely, but it doesn't leave that much residue when you remove it. Um, so that's a nice way to, to cut on some of that glow that might happen. Uh, but then the other thing is you'll see by making this hole a bit smaller, we're not going to see the edges of that screen. So let's, uh, let's drop that in there. I'll just put this one, one side in because it's easy and fast. And then you can just pop this lens in. This stuff is stretchy enough. You can pop it in from the top and there you go you've got a pretty nice um, little holder for your eyeball and then what I also did was I went with a black sharpie and I got rid of my uh, cutting mark just so we wouldn't see those at all so you can go in and draw over those and then I also went into the edge of my foam here happens to be kind of gray and I wanted to darken that as well um, this may be overkill. No one, no one is probably likely to notice it because they're too busy screaming and freaking out. Um, but if you, if you see there, I've gotten rid of that light uh, foam in there. And then as I draw over, uh, this Sharpie is maybe out of juice. There we go. We can get rid of that, that little line there. You could use some other kind of marking uh, that won't be as noticeable. So, like that, okay, and then that's going to hide nicely under there. I don't think anyone's going to see those edges, and let's pop, I'll just pop the one eyeball through for you to see that final effect. It'll look like that. And there you have it. So here's my final one here with these nice big blue eyes, these big uh, pupils on here. And uh, as, uh, as we wrap up the show, I can prove to you that I can probably get back to uh, my workstation there without killing myself tripping on something in the shop. And uh, let's head back. This is a challenge. Let's see if I can operate the computer. There we are. Uh, let's hide that. Yeah, so there we are. It's uh, 
appropriate at this point for me to remind you that Dollface is our coupon code. And uh, that's the project of the week. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, I hope I didn't scare too many people <laughs> off with that one. Uh, and I also recommend this if you're doing a lot of things with wigs and masks and costumes, um, accessories, you can get a $6 skull at your local uh, hardware store or wherever you buy that kind of decoration and mount it on a little piece of black pipe uh, with a flange to some wood and that gives you a nice uh, base that's not going anywhere uh, that allows you to place your work somewhere that you can you can see or you can just leave it up like that. You don't have to necessarily wear this. It could be a cool um, prop to set in a window to freak people out as they walk by. So uh, that is about going to wrap it up. Um, thank you again for stopping by for the show. And uh, I will be putting out a tutorial on this. So um, you'll see it's quite straightforward, but I think with just a few simple materials, you can take the monster mask and really enhance uh, a lot of different types of inexpensive, or you could use more expensive uh, you know, latex masks, rubber masks, things like that. Uh, with the monster mask and some cool eyeball uh, designs and animations. So uh, that is it for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park, and this has been John Park's Workshop, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.